We follow the story of Helen, a 40-year-old woman who has just gone through a divorce. She is sitting at a party all by herself, contemplating what her life has become. She has registered for a beginner's survival hiking trip on the Appalachian Trail, to unwind and gather her thoughts. She takes out the list of goals in her bag and reads it to herself. She plans to have a deeper connection with nature, rebuild herself, and get a certificate for the course. A notification suddenly pops up on her phone. Her ex-husband, Mike, sends her a picture of their wedding reminding her that it would have been their sixth anniversary if they had not broken up, and says that he misses her. She remembers the day of their wedding, right after that photo was taken. Mike hits the dance floor with several other women. Duncan, her brother, and his best friend Jake tell her that she made a big mistake marrying Mike. Helen simply tells them to give her and her husband a break and let them enjoy things, since it is their wedding day. Helen tells Duncan that she appreciates him being protective of her, but she and Mike have been together for a long time, and she is sure that their married life is going to be fine. Ironically, Mike suddenly falls from being too drunk, despite the special occasion. Back at the party, Helen puts down her phone to look for her brother, but meets Jake instead. He approaches her and asks how she is, but Helen cuts him off, asking for Duncan. However, because of the loud music playing, Jake cannot hear her properly. They head outside, and Jake tells her that her brother went out with his new girlfriend Molly. Helen leaves her keys to Jake and asks him to hand them to her brother. She wants him to look after her house while she is away for her hiking trip. Jake assures her that he will take care of it, and they part ways. Duncan arrives at Helen's place in his car the next day. He hands her a cup of coffee and apologizes for not being able to meet her at the party last night. He confirms that Jake has given him the keys to her house. Helen hands him a list of reminders, and he wishes her luck for her trip. Helen stops by her grandmother's house, Jiggy, along the way. Jiggy is the one who raised her and her brother when they were younger. Helen finds Jiggy's note on the dining table, saying that she is at the book club. She decides to prepare dinner for herself, and wait for Jiggy at the beautifully lit couch in the backyard. Jiggy finally arrives, singing and swaying happily as she walks toward Helen. Helen watches the lovely woman in delight, and claps for her at the end of her performance. The two women express how much they miss each other. As they lay on the couch, Jiggy asks her how she is feeling. Helen tells her that her divorce is finalized. She admits that although she and Mike have not seen each other for over a year now, she cannot help but feel somewhat sad for the life they can never have. Helen leaves Jigga's place the next morning and continues her way to the Connecticut motel, where the hikers are meant to meet up. She sees a group of women walking out of the motel, and she is about to greet them when Mike video calls her all of a sudden. Against her better judgment, Helen answers the call. Mike immediately apologizes for how he acted when they were married. Now that they are divorced, he finally realizes how wrong he was, and begs Helen to work things out with him. However, Helen is already over him, and the exhausting marriage they had, from the moment she realized that she was the only one holding it together in the first place. She gives him the cold shoulder and ends the call immediately. Helen gets out of her car and unloads her bags. She enters the motel and walks to the front desk, where she meets Hugh. Hugh gives her a hug when he finds out that there is another hiker in the same age bracket as him. As it turns out, the hiking trip consists of a bunch of young adults eager for adventure. The next morning, the hiking guide, a young man named Beckett, orients the hiking team with everything they need to know for their journey. He encourages them to learn more about each other, since they will be a whole team for this trip. The hiking group includes Wendy, a brown-skinned woman with high ponytailed braids. She is smart, confident, and adventurous. Hugh, a middle-aged gay guy wearing rectangular rimmed glasses. He tends towards perfectionism and gets frustrated when things do not go his way, so he decided to take this trip to work on his emotions. Mason is a tall man with a short beard. He believes that he has vast knowledge when it comes to hiking, since he has been doing it since he was a child. He confidently tells the group that they can ask him anything if they want to, assuming the position of the leader. This does not sit well with Beckett, since it is his responsibility to watch over the group. Helen introduces herself, sharing her recent divorce and the exhaustion she felt during her marriage, especially her miscarriage, which left her devastated. Now she is trying to rebuild herself, and she believes that this hiking trip is the first step to her healing. To her surprise, Jake introduces himself next. She had no idea that he was also on this hiking trip. Jake is a doctor, but he is not practicing at the moment. He pretends he does not know Helen, and says that he is there for the same reason. Sue is a short-haired young woman with round glasses. She informs the group that she is taking a vow of silence during the hiking trip, to deepen her connection with her spirituality. Lastly, Kaylee is a thin, blonde girl with side braids. She is experiencing some post-trauma from her childhood when the rain flooded their wooden cabin, so now she wants to face that fear. After their introductions, Beckett tells the team to prepare their hiking equipment. Helen carelessly forgets her hiking boots, which quickly puts her on Beckett's bad side, as it could soon become a problem for her and their whole group. Beckett gives them some reminders, before dismissing them to prepare for their hiking tomorrow. Helen follows Jake out the door and immediately questions him. She feels that his presence will ruin her trip, and demands that he leave. Jake calmly tells her that he booked this trip a long time ago, and there is nothing she can do about it. 
Backed into a corner, Helen decides that they should just act like they do not know each other for the course of the hiking. The group wakes up early the next day. A blue bus is waiting for them in front of the motel, which will take them to the beginning of the Appalachian Trail. They arrive at their destination at noon, all hyped up and ready to achieve their individual goals. Helen immediately injures her right knee from lifting her heavy backpack improperly. Beckett cannot believe that she has already managed to injure herself when the hiking trip has not even started yet. He quickly requests the medicine kit. Helen does not want to make a big deal out of it, and tells them that the blood will dry up in no time. But this is not an argument for Beckett, since he is responsible for their safety. Being the doctor among them, Jake is in charge of tending to the group's injuries. He leads Helen to the side and asks her to sit down while he dresses her wound. He congratulates her on her divorce, but Helen remains cold towards him. When they are done, Beckett leads the group to the start of the trail and finally begins their hiking trip. Kaylee immediately starts complaining, saying that it is not what she was expecting, and that she stupidly brought things that Beckett specifically told them not to bring. Deeper into the trail, the group's speed is starting to decline, since they are all beginners. All except for Mason, who manages to keep pace with Beckett. Beckett stops from time to time to monitor the group, which does not please Mason. Beckett tells him that their next stop is coming up ahead. He just needs a bit more patience. However, Mason reacts differently and decides to head there on his own. Seeing that there is no convincing him, Beckett decides not to go with him, and just waits for the rest of the group. The group takes a short break to rehydrate and recover some energy before they continue their hike. Beckett mentions that he noticed Helen stepping on logs during their hike. He warns everyone, especially her, that they should not be doing that, because there is a tendency for those logs to be rotten, and they cannot carry their body weight. If an accident happens and they break their leg, this will lead to an emergency evacuation, which none of them want. The group continues their hike with Helen at the back. Since she is not wearing her hiking boots, her feet start to feel sore, which makes her pace a lot slower. This also causes her not to be in the best condition to hike. At sundown, Beckett halts the group at a clearing surrounded by large boulders to set up camp for the night. Beckett assigns Jake to make the fire, and Wendy to prepare their packed food, while he and the rest of the group make the tents. Later on, Beckett teaches the group about bear hang, which is done to stop bears from eating their food, and to avoid attracting bears to their campsite in general. They walk a few yards away from their camp, and Beckett shows them how to make a bear hang. Two ropes are tied high up in separate trees, and their food bags are hanging in the middle. In that way, even if the bears climb up the tree, they will still not be able to reach the food bags. Each tent is occupied by two members of the group. Helen and Wendy are sharing their tent, and are preparing to rest for the night. Wendy casually mentions that she fancies Jake. She loves how independent and dependable he is, not to mention that he is a doctor. Helen sees Jake as just her dumb brother's friend, and contradicts every positive thing she is saying, without even knowing Jake on a deeper level. Wendy is not easily swayed by her comments, and lets her have her own opinion and preference. Wendy tries getting closer to Helen. She shares that she already misses her mom, since they are practically best friends. However, Helen is still not willing to open herself up to her new companion. She just tells Wendy that her grandmother, Jiggy, is the one who raised her and her brother. Wendy respects her boundaries, and they call it a night. The next morning, the group is having breakfast to fuel up for the journey awaiting them. Helen asks Jake to help her with her bandages. Jake leads her to the side, where there are boulders to sit on, so he can have some space and leverage to work with. Being her typical I can handle everything self, she mentions that she does not need help, and just needs some medication for her blisters. Jake refuses to give her anything before he sees for himself. He puts some bandages on it and as usual, Helen brushes it off, saying that she is stronger than she looks. Jake notices that she seems to be overcompensating for her feelings of inferiority, especially after she just got out of her broken down marriage. He asks her how she truly feels. However, she still refuses to give in, as she claims to be a changed person, a lot more braver and stronger now. She will face any challenges head on with her new personality. Helen decides to change the subject and asks why Jake needs sunglasses for night vision. At first he is hesitant to tell her his reason, but he decides to tell her eventually. Jake did not pass the physical test for this hiking trip, because of his bad vision at night. He makes her swear not to mention it to anyone in the group, as it could shortly halt their trip. Anyway, they do not even hike at night, so it's not causing them any problems. Beckett checks on them and sees Helen's blisters. From the orientation back at the motel, Helen does not feel right about Beckett, seeing how much older she is than him. She feels that Beckett is somehow incompetent because of his age. However, Beckett is just doing his job as best as possible, to keep the group safe. He reminds the group that they should not be doing what Helen is doing. The moment they sense or feel that something is wrong, they should immediately address it. Furthermore, they should not act like Mason either, and become a team player. Hikers like Mason, who are more skilled, put unnecessary pressure on less skilled hikers, which only causes them to tire easily. They should work together if they want to conquer this trail. A few days go by without any accident. The group even starts to acquire new hike names based on their character. Mason learns to stop occasionally and wait for the rest of the group, 
but he still cannot help but be smug about it. During the nights they set up camp, the group gathers around the campfire and gets to know more about each other. Thus, they each grow closer together, despite their differences. One morning, Winnie shares her studies in psychology concerning positive behavior. As they stop for a short break, she asks the group to name three things they are thankful for, which boosts their moods. They set up camp early that afternoon. Helen notices Jake lingering around her, which puts her on edge. She confronts him and immediately projects her insecurities on him. She says that he is a pretending humble know-it-all, and he looks down on everyone because he thinks that he is better. She demands that he just speak his truth, instead of looking at her and putting her down. In reality, Helen is the one looking down on herself, honing her thoughts against herself because of what happened with her life. Jake finally speaks about what has been on his mind for a long time. He blurts out that Helen was just too good for Mike in the first place. However, this only leads to a bigger argument, as Helen feels even more threatened that Jake is looking down on her, because of his comment on something that he has no experience with. She tells him to mind his own business, and that she does not need any help, especially not from him. Beckett advises the group to fuel up and save their energy for tomorrow. They are going to split the group into two, according to their speed, except for Mason. This is to put their navigation skills to the test, and also for them to develop their teamwork. Especially Mason, who is grouped with the slow hikers. They will continue through the same trail, but with 30 minutes between the two groups. They will meet up again at their stop to set up camp. The next day, Beckett, Wendy, and Jake are about to start the hike of their group when Beckett sees a paper on the ground. He is immediately disappointed, since he repeatedly tells them that they are not to leave any trash on the trail. He calls the group and reminds them again to respect nature and leave no trace wherever they go. Jake apologizes to Helen about what happened the night before, and Helen tells him that they should just forget about it. Before his group leaves for the first hike, Jake hands her a letter to hold on to, but he reminds her not to read it just yet. When the first group is gone, Helen mentions to Hugh that she and Jake know each other, to prove that nothing is going on between them. She finds out from him that, contrary to what Jake told her, he just booked this trip recently, right before it was about to begin. 30 minutes later, Helen, Mason, Hugh, Kaylee, and Sue start their hike as the second team. They stop to reorient themselves and review the map together. Hugh keeps walking and crosses a rotten log. The log breaks under his foot, causing him to fall through and get stuck. Helen and the other girls immediately rush to his side when they hear his shriek. Mason, on the other hand, freezes up, not knowing what to do. The girls do their best to get Hugh unstuck from the log and lay him on the forest floor. Helen sees that he broke his leg from the fall, and quickly uses a branch to create a makeshift support. Seeing that Mason is out of it, they decide that Helen will call the first group for help. Helen tells Sue and Kaylee to set up camp to make sure they keep warm. She asks them to take turns resting, so there is always someone keeping an eye on Hugh. Before she leaves, she walks over to Mason, who is still shaken by the accident. She assures him that she will come back for them with help, and until then, he should ensure the safety of their group. Helen immediately begins her hike, making sure that she is going in the right direction at all times. It is already dark, and the first group is starting to get worried about the others. They are thinking about what to do next when Helen finally arrives and tells them about what happened. It is difficult for them to travel at night, so they have to wait until tomorrow to go back for Hugh and the rest of the group. They decide to rest for the night, since they will need all their energy tomorrow. Helen and Jake are sharing a tent. She shares about her other brother, Nathan, who passed away from an accident. Helen was six years old at the time, and Nathan was five. He wanted to go to the lake but Helen wanted to watch a movie. Nathan decided to go by himself, but being a small child, he fell in the lake and drowned. The accident ripped their family apart, causing their parents to get divorced. Their mother left Helen and Duncan at their grandmother's house, never to be seen again. Jake decides not to push any further, and tells her that they should rest up. Helen suddenly remembers what her group was fussing about earlier in their hike, about him kissing Wendy, and decides to ask him about it. Jake shrugs it off and says it was just a part of truth or dare. He does not understand why she is prying on him, and throws it out that she is the one who keeps talking to her ex-husband. Helen is back on the defensive, and says that it is Mike who keeps calling her. She decides that they should mind their own business, and leaves it at that. Helen and the group pack up early the next morning to rejoin the others. Seeing that Helen has managed to find them yesterday on her own, Beckett commends her and assigns her to guide them to where her team is. They arrive at Mason's camp by the time the sun is up in the sky. Sue and Kaylee rush to Helen, glad that she has brought help for them. Jake immediately assesses Hugh and Beckett and quickly goes into action, telling the group what they need to do. Together, they create a makeshift stretcher for Hugh using ropes, long sticks, and a bunch of jackets. Beckett calls a medical team to assist them as soon as possible. Wendy, Sue, and Kaylee are traveling ahead of the group, carrying their food and supplies. They are headed to the end of their hiking trail, where the rest of the group will meet up with them later. Meanwhile Helen, Jake, Beckett, and Mason are traveling at a much slower pace, as they need to carry Hugh carefully. They are headed near the road, where the medical team is waiting for them to pick up the injured man. They pass the time by chanting and resting from time to time. 
They reach the end of the trail before the sun goes down. A medical team and an ambulance are already waiting for them. Hugh is moved to the proper stretcher this time and thanks Helen. He tells her that if she likes Jake, she should just tell him. Her goal is to reset during this hiking trip in the first place, so why shouldn't she start with him? Helen still denies that she likes him, just thinking about it makes it feel weird. The medical team wheels Hugh into the ambulance as he waves goodbye to his newly made friends. Helen and the guys head back to the trail to meet up with the others and end their hiking trip together. They set up final camp near a beautiful lake, deep within the Appalachian Trail. The group enjoys the rest of their day together. Helen and Jake walk together, reminiscing the time when they were still in college, and she would hang out with him and her brother. Jake remembers her being so full of life back then. Night falls, and they are getting ready for dinner. While the group is setting up a fire, Helen goes out to find Jake in the woods. She calls out to him and finds him sitting on the forest floor, leaning back to a tree. He immediately hugs her in relief, and thanks her for finding him. It turns out that he's lost his night vision glasses, and he cannot find his way around. They lean in closer together, and are about to kiss when someone suddenly calls them. They return to the campsite together. They all pack up the next day, and Beckett concludes their hiking trip by leading a respectful pledge to Mother Earth. Kaylee leads them to the trail out. The bus picks them up and brings them back to the motel that night. They celebrate the successful hiking trip, singing and drinking together. Beckett takes the mic and announces that the certificate is awarded to Hugh. This raises a couple of concerns from Sue and Kaylee, since Hugh is not even there to begin with, and it is Helen who helped Hugh. Helen says that it is not a big deal, and host cheers for Hugh. She has already proven herself worthy, more than any certificate. Jake sees Helen leaving and follows her out. She simply tells him that she is going home. He tries convincing her to stay, but she insists that she has to leave. The girls follow her and give her a final hug. As Helen drives through the night, she contemplates her feelings about Jake. She laughs at the idea, thinking of how bizarre it is. Helen arrives at Jig's place, where she finally reads the letter Jake handed to her back on the trip. It tells her in detail how he truly feels about her, and how much he loves her. Jiggy notices the difference in her, as she is glowing from her trip. Duncan arrives at their grandmother's place, and Helen immediately hugs him. She tells him that she finally realizes that she only really cares about her own feelings, and not his. Duncan is weirded out by her new personality, but is glad to see that she is happy. That evening, Duncan, Helen, and Jiggy go to a book club party. Helen sees Jake and tells him that she finally read the letter. He tells her how he feels once again. Helen presses her lips against his, and they enjoy the night together. 